I've felt the approaching autumn for a long time now. At first, it was just a change in the air that whispered of the cold, crispy mornings I had ahead of me. I saw it in the calm warmth of the evening light that tinted the green treetops yellow just ever so slightly. I saw it in the blushing apples outside my window, in the golden wheat on the fields, and the hay bales that lie scattered across the land like giant marshmallows, in the mist that rise from the mountains like smoke. But strongest of all, I feel it inside. The coming of autumn always fills me with an overwhelming feeling, like longing for what was and what will come, a sadness but in a good way. Can you hear me? It's a little bit loud, I think. Hi there, friend. It's raining today, but as we say in Sweden, there's no bad weather, only bad clothing. Unfortunately, I also only own bad clothing, foreign that is. The first time we went into our new home was a year ago. I remember when I walked into where we live now, I literally lost my breath. (laughs) Because it was so beautiful with the big windows and the yellowing trees outside. I did feel at home pretty quickly, but I don't feel like we have gotten, you know, settled until like just a few months ago. The first winter, I feel like we didn't exactly get to enjoy it like we probably can this winter. It was a beautiful winter though. Too bad like the forests were all destroyed by it. (laughs) I'm honestly, like honestly sad about that because when you go into the forest now and it's so destroyed you can see that it won't ever look the same in my entire lifetime as it was before the last winter. But that's life I guess and that's what autumn's all about, right? Like change and accepting it and preparing. Something I really love about this place is how colorful it is. In spring, the sky is like crazy colorful. (laughs) It is so pretty here. There's a rainbow here. I can't even fit all of it on screen. But look at this sky. (laughs) Then comes summer and everything is green. I'm just so thankful for living here, you know? I think something went wrong. Well, a lot of things went wrong. The recipe said to immediately put it into your bottle, so I did. However, my bottle couldn't handle the heat, so the bottom came clean off. It just sounded ching, and I was like, okay, I'm out. After that, I let it sit quite some time before I poured it into this, and it's been sitting in the fridge, but... It doesn't seem to be liquid anymore. (laughs) It's like jelly. What do I do now? Do I need to throw this away? I'm out in the garden picking more berries. The light is extremely harsh out. (laughs) Recently it's, it's just been cold and rainy and it's just felt like autumn. But these past few days it's been so warm and so sunny. So it's like we got the last bit of summer. Which was really nice because yesterday I was at a... It's like a medieval... Fair. And it was so nice but really warm. And I bought some really nice things. I got some carrot marmalade, some sort of spice mix. There's this flower, it's really really common, but someone sold this sort of drink made from that flower. And the girl selling it was like so passionate. She was like, everyone thinks it's a weed, but but actually it's like really tasty and you can do stuff with it. I'm like super interested in this though. I'm gonna try it. It smells really spicy. Oh. 
It's really strange. I think I'm gonna try to make this next year. I think it's so much fun to buy things on these markets. The packaging is always really cute. This spice, for example, it's for, I guess, when you cook lamb, <laughs> but I don't think I'm ever gonna do that. But I mean, I think it could be nice on potatoes. But one thing that was really nice, it was these really cool old ladies and they sold runes and rune fortunes. Little spider, go away. So I bought a fortune. I got the chaos rune, the war rune, and they like started talking to me about how chaotic this rune was. And I was like, geez. <laughs> but they said that really it's a good rune because it's a cleansing one. I bought a necklace with the same rune. There was these amazing like Viking brooches. Man, I, I would love those, but they were like, I don't really have the budget for jewelry right now. I didn't buy much. I bought some tea. I really want to thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. It's pretty crazy to me. I really wanted to celebrate, so I thought, cool, I'm gonna go make like a sandwich cake. <laughs> Not to like toot my own horn, but I'm pretty badass at making sandwich cakes. So I did one, but it ended up being like the ugliest freaking cake I have ever made. <laughs> but anyhow, I thought I could show you how to do it. So let's go to a voiceover. Yes, hello, this is Omnipresent Narrator speaking. <laughs> if you never heard of Swedish sandwich cake, your mind is going to be blown. This is the savory cake for adults that make you feel like a kid again. In Sweden, you can get big sheets of bread specifically for sandwich cakes. But if you're not in Sweden, don't worry. You can just get your standard pre-cut square loaf of bread and cut away the crust and layer it. Or, you know, make a round one. There's really no rules here. <laughs> You need some sort of plate, and since I made mine so unnecessarily huge, I used a baking tray with a sheet of baking paper on. To cover this, I needed three by four slices of bread. I wanted three layers, so I needed four layers of bread. Traditional Swedish fillings are sticky mixtures with ham or liver patty, but today I'm making mine completely plant-based, and the great thing is you can really do these however you want them. I sort of followed a few recipes online. For my first layer I used grilled paprika as the base. I dried them up with a paper towel, then I added a clove of garlic, sunflower seed, some olive oil and red wine vinegar. I felt very skeptical that this would mix to a paste, but to my surprise it became almost too watery. As I covered the bottom layer I remembered that I don't actually like grilled paprika, but whatever. <laughs> to make the cake more stable, I cut some slices of bread in half to offset them a bit, covered the entire first layer and then went to mix the second filling. Next I did a smoked tofu and pepper root layer. <laughs> you needed rocula. Rocula? I happened to have some baby spinach at hand, so I took that. I shredded my smoked tofu, diced some red onion finely, and mixed that with some creme fraiche, but you can use yogurt or whatever. Then I added some pepper root. I stirred it together, then covered the entire layer. And I know <laughs> it looks disgusting, <laughs> but I promise you if I had better lighting, it would look better. So just trust me with this. My next layer is my absolutely favorite one, and it's called Skagen Mixture. Skagen Rara. Traditionally, it's made with shrimp, but I added some of my leftover tofu, some mayonnaise, creme fraiche, and mixed it together with red onion and freshly squeezed lemon juice. Then you need some dill and caviar. I used one made of seaweed. At this point, I was really losing daylight, but it doesn't really matter because you really should do this cake the day before to let it all sit. However, this behemoth of a sandwich didn't fit in my fridge, so we really needed to eat some of it today. When you're doing the outside, like the icing, you whip up some cream, mix that with mayonnaise. Yes, you heard me right, and trust me, strangely enough, this works. <laughs> Then you cover your cake and go into your toppings. If you search for Swedish sandwich cake on Pinterest or something, you will find absolutely beautiful uh, examples of the decorations. 
but you know. <laughs> I topped mine with avocado, cucumber, tomato, lemon, and the most important part, grapes. Yes, do not forget the grapes. Traditionally, you cover this with like ham and cheese, and you can of course do this with plant-based ham and stuff if you want to, but I actually prefer it this way. 